Examining or talking about early detection and examination of testicular cancer is not the most comfortable thing you want to talk about. Um, I don't think there's anything different than when we talk to a woman to do their self-breast exam. It's just a little bit harder discussion when we talk to men, or to boys particularly. What I usually tell family members or when somebody is diagnosed and they come with their family members, what could I have done or what should I do? The answer is, every time you take a shower or if you feel any lump or mass, you need to let the doctor know. If you have any unexplained pain, you need to let the doctor know. If there's a swelling in that area that doesn't go away, you have to let the doctor know. None of this is 100% testicular cancer, but regardless, it's an important thing. You shouldn't be shy as a young man to talk to your parents if you're at that age or if you're a young adult talk to your doctor that hey I have a problem I need somebody to check this one out. It is way more likely to find a benign non-cancer malignant testicular process than it is to find testicular cancer so the symptoms of pain swelling um, enlargement tenderness whatever you want to call it is more likely to find a non-cancerous problem rather than it is to find cancer that's why they need to be checked you don't have as many uh, people talking about testicular cancer or testicular exam or testicular symptoms. There is that stigma when you're talking about young men who have a swelling in their testicle about what that could mean and what that could affect their personality, their sexual drive and so on and so forth. But that doesn't mean we don't need to talk about it. It's not as much publicized. So it should. There is they're not going to use their sexual drive, they're not going to have any problems down the road having children. It's, they need to be brought to the attention of the provider that there's a problem so we can deal with it. Otherwise, they're going to have a problem that can affect that. So when testicular cancer is caught early and you end up only having a surgical procedure to remove the tumor or remove one testicle, that does not affect at all. Uh, sexual drive does not affect potency and does not affect the chances of you know, fertility down the road. But it's extremely rare to be familiar, but there are, there are some cases. So family history of testicular cancer is one thing that you need to be more aware about. Um, there is uh, the history of undescended testicle. Now, I would like to spend a little bit of time on talking about this because not every man or every male who had a problem with undescended testicle, which is a very common problem, is going to have testicular cancer. But just to, that's one of the things that you should make, okay, if, if you ask your parents if you've had that problem, maybe you need to be checking, examining yourself a little bit more. It's exposure to, uh, the third thing is, for example, exposure to some form of chemicals or um, uh, 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 radiation uh, exposure from other things. Uh, one thing, however, that's also I want to really like to emphasize is lately over the last probably a couple of years or so, there has been two sets of data, one from the US and the other one from Europe, that actually shows that there's also a correlation, we don't understand it completely, between marijuana use and testicular cancer. So knowing that we're talking to the younger uh, men in the crowd, we need to be also aware that this actually does exist, that there is a correlation. In some studies in Europe, they show that there's at least two or three times higher risk of developing testicular cancer for what they call regular users of marijuana. So I say to the young men, don't be shy to ask to talk about the problem. Um, there's nothing awkward about it. It's part of your body. You have to be comfortable talking about it. You talk to your parents or uh, as a young adult to your doctors about a lot of other things. That's one very important thing to talk about. I, talk, I tell the parents, however, is don't ignore that complaint and try to say, oh, it's nothing, you were playing soccer, you probably got hit, or you were playing football. But don't ignore it. If the symptom stays or lingers, it needs to be evaluated by a professional uh, medical provider. To all men in general, um, you have to learn about sex education or sexual education. One very important thing to talk about and, uh, and talk to young men about is actually a young men and women, but since we're talking about the young men right now, is HPV. So HPV is the virus. It's a virus that can lead to cancer of the head and neck, cancer of the oral cavity. When I start training, it used to affect very elderly men or women who are alcoholics or very heavy smokers. Right now, probably over the last eight to 10 years, and definitely in the last probably five years or so, we've seen a much higher trend in much younger men and women 
those are the folks that have been doing everything they're supposed to do. They're not alcoholic, non-drinkers, don't smoke, and they come in with head and neck cancer. Most of those patients have what we call HPV related. That's a sexually transmitted oral cavity cancer. Uh, what can we do? Um, two things. Um, get vaccinated for HPV, men and uh, uh, women. And um, there is always the abstinence uh, choice. Um, I have two kids and I decide to vaccinate them just because I know my kids. I don't know who they're going to be with. Thank you.